My name is Toyo C. Ige Jongo. I work at the Federal University of Technology, Akure, as an aquatic ecologist. I'm also a laureate of the One Planet Fellowship. I and my team have been in this community, Okesiri okay, community, the coastal community in Ondo State. And we're investigating the physical and chemical parameters of this water. We are looking at how climate change affected this water over time. We are investigating the fishes too, studying the fishes, their health and well-being. We are also looking at the dependent livelihoods of the community. The fishes here and also the dependent livelihoods. Come with me. I actually grew up in a community in Lagos State called Ekwe and it was a beautiful childhood for me because I was very close to nature. Ekwe is a community that is bounded with water and it has a lot of beaches around. So we grew up with water and we grew up close to fish markets. There were so many people that come around to Ekwe Lagoon to buy fishes. So I grew up seeing so many species of fishes and that actually attracted me to nature. And while growing up, I noticed differences. The vibrant beaches were losing their color. Variety of fishes were dwindling with time. And that actually contributed to my study in fisheries and aquaculture. Aquaculture talks about culturing in water. Then the fishery talks about how we engage in activities dealing with the fishery resources in order to you know, preserve what we have for future generations. Some years back, statistics have hit that malnutrition is like 24% in Nigeria. That's the 1974. In 2024, it would have reduced but we have 69%. And when we don't have sufficient protein, it's more aggravating because of crash of core, because of harassment. And the worst hit of this malnutrition are children, especially children under the age of five. So an effort to ensure that they get a better source of nutrients and protein is fish production. We the challenges challenges if you are not able to do it, you will be able to do it. You But in this sense, you will be able to do it. 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 You will be able to do Konjeki as an edge protein ledger. Oh, wow, okay. So, fish is very, very important. Our work contributes to the increase in the production of fish for consumption so that there will be a balanced diet for in all individuals, especially for children. So, it's important for these fish products to be available for food security and for balanced nutrition. As part of our research work that we are carrying out in my research team, we take water samples for the water, we take it to the laboratory. We take fish samples, we take water samples, we take sediment samples. We bring them to the laboratory 
For example, we work on the heavy metals of either the fish, the water, and the sediment. Heavy metals are studied such as lead, chromium, nickel, cobalt. These heavy metals are metals that are detrimental not only to the health of the aquatic ecosystem but also to humans. Good morning. How is work going? We digest the fish samples and they become liquid and we take the liquid samples and take it to the AAS, Atomic Absorption Spectrophotometer. Oh. We work on the um, analysis and from there we can get the heavy metals and it's calibrated and you try to understand the range of the different types of heavy metals in the water body. The local community don't have access to equipment. They can only notice that the color of the water is changing but they don't know why. And at times some of the challenges are as a result of their fishing practices. So what we do as scientists is to tell them that these fishes are actually going into extinction because of unsustainable fishing practices. We educate them. We tell them how to use their gear to catch fishes. That you leave enough species that are the small ages so that they can grow again and be replenished. We carry out the work of knowledge, we carry out the work of sensitization, we carry out the work of empowerment. We encourage sustainable fishing practices with them, they carry it out and they can be able to have more fishes in the water and at least it makes it better for them there is balanced food on the table of an average occupant. We have very vibrant women scientists. Uh, many of the women have won awards and laurels and um, most of the time when our women get these things they sort of ensure that the thing trickles down to ensure that quite a lot more people can benefit from what they are doing. First to say thank you to Howard for supporting women to grow academically and to grow their research potentials because if these women do not get support it's going to be very difficult for them to go up. First school we are here we have yes one planet fellowship is like a game changer for fellows and from me it took me from a level of zero to hundred okay so how far have you gone let's see I had direction, I had focus, and with our purpose roadmap, I was able to give myself timeline of achievable objective for years to come. I started getting grants from international bodies because I was trained us on um, grant writing and scientific writing. My publication feasibility started to increase and my career just improved as a researcher and from the fellowship you have more skills, soft skills and more knowledge on how to be a better leader. That has helped me to be able to lead the research team that I work with and we carry out research that has brought positive change to the community. Ever since we started the mentoring program, it has been one of incredible value to me. My mentor, Dr. Toyosi Igejongbo, has helped me in guiding and supporting me to achieve my set developmental goals and also to achieve the maximum potential in my purpose roadmap. In years to come, I want to be the most influential voice as regards climate change in the world. I want to be one of the voices that would speak to positive development of communities and the ecosystem when it comes to climate change, when it comes to the aquatic ecosystem, when it comes to fisheries and when it comes to water.